this is the Housing Committee on February 24th, 2021. Well, sorry. Okay, are we all up? That was my trial run. Are we ready? The meeting is now live, Mr. Chair. Thank you. I am Council Member Gilbert Cedillo, Chair of the Housing Committee. This is February 24th, 2021, we'd like to call this meeting to order with a roll call. I want to note that Mr. Harris Dawson is in a concurrent meeting dealing with COVID relief for the city of Los Angeles. Mr. Lee is excused due to another conflict. Uh, with that, uh, Madam Assistant, would you uh, call the roll? Calling the roll for the Housing Committee meeting on February 24th, Councilmember Cedillo. Cedillo present. Councilmember Rahman. Thank you. Councilmember Harris Dawson is not present at the moment. Councilmember Krikorian. Here. And Councilmember Lee is excused. Thank you. Clerk, does that move us to public comment? Yes. Would you like me to read the public comment instruction? Please. Members of the public who would like to offer public comment on the items listed on the agenda should call 1-669-254-5252 and use meeting ID number 160-871-1866 and then press the number sign. Press the number sign again when prompted for a participant ID. Once admitted into the meeting, press star 9 to request to speak. Caller with the last number 3, caller with the last number 5145, could you please Six to unmute. State your name and the items you want to speak on. Caller with the last four digits, 5145. Could you press star six to unmute? State your name and the items you want to speak on. Caller with the last four numbers, 5145. Could you press star six to unmute and state the items and your, your name to and state the items? Speak on. Caller with the last four digits, 8178. Could you press star 6, state your name and the item you want to speak on. Caller with the last four digits, 8178. Could you press star 6 to unmute. And Hello? Yes. Hi there. Yes, my name is, hey, my name is Sophie Strauss. I'm calling to voice support for item number three, the city of Raman motion. Um, go ahead. Thank you. Um, so all of you guys made the right choice this morning um, in the general meeting to vote in favor of increased pay for frontline grocery workers. Well, except for city staffer B, or I, I mean, John Lee who actually just parroted the same fear-mongering talking points that we've all heard. But the economic pressures of the pandemic are not limited to the issue of fair compensation. They're also directly tied and, and impacting how people are able to stay in their homes right now. And the last thing that we need as we are rounding the corner on this pandemic where people have had unprecedented economic devastation is for people to be getting evicted because the affordability covenants on their homes and their apartments and their buildings are expiring. So we need a rent freeze on all of these residential units with expired or expiring affordability covenants um, because otherwise our homelessness crisis, which is already at an all-time high, is just going to expand and expand beyond anything that we can do in Los Angeles will not be a city for anybody but the wealthy and the elite. Thank you. Thank you. Caller with the last digits, 8074. Could you please press star 6 to unmute? State your name and the items you want to speak on. Caller with the last four digits, 8074. Could you please press star 6 to unmute? State your name 
and the items you want to speak on. Caller with the last four digits, 8074. Do you please press star six to unmute, state your name and the items you want to speak on. Caller with the last four digits, 3034. Could you please press star six to unmute, state your name and the items you want to speak on. Caller with the last four digits, 3034. Could you please press star six, state your name and the items you want to speak on. Caller with the last four digits, 2240. Could you please press star six to unmute, state your name and the items you want to speak on. Caller with the last four digits, 2240. Could you please state your name, uh, press star six to unmute, state your name and the items you want to speak on. Caller with the last four digits, 2240. Could you please press star six to unmute, state your name and the items you want to speak on. With the last four digits, 0240, could you please press star six to unmute, state your name and the items you want to speak on. Caller with the last four digits, 0240, could you please press star six to unmute, state your name and the items you want to speak on. Sorry, can I ask a question? Are all of these callers yes. unable to be heard? I'm not sure what, um, yeah, I, so I many of like them are not able to. Yeah. Council Member Rahman, if I can oh, speak to that. Question. I think there might be a little delay, Mel, yeah. in your um, communication. If we could maybe okay. give them a couple of seconds before uh, you go to the next caller to see if they respond. Yeah, I'm so sorry, okay. I didn't mean to interrupt you, Mel. I apologize, I just wanted to, no, 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 I no, just no. wasn't sure why so many no, people no. couldn't unmute. I know, I know, that's, that's fine. Okay, we'll start. Caller with the last four digits, 8919. Could you number six to unmute, state your name and the items you wanna speak on. Caller with the last four digits, 8919. Could you please press star six to unmute, state your name and the items you want to speak on. Caller with the last four digits, 8919. Could you please press star six to unmute, state your name and the items you want to speak on. Caller with the last four digits, 5145. Hi, Mel. Yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt you. A member of the public just called in and they said that the public callers are muted. So if we can just uh, take a brief pause so that we can remedy the situation going on with the public comment. Two brief minutes. Okay, okay. Yes. Hello. Hello.
Okay, um, we, I will start again. Sorry about that. Caller with the last four digits, 5145, could you please press star six to unmute, state your name and the items you want to speak on. Caller, go ahead. Hi, my name is Liliana Hernandez. Yeah. I am a hotel worker and I have lost my job because of COVID. And now I'm threatened with the loss of my housing as well. And that's why I'm so grateful mm -hmm. that Council Member Raman is fighting for homes and no hotels and supporting the Just Hollywood plan. I'm going to thank you, her, from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much. Thank you. Caller with the last four digits, 3034. Could you please press star six to unmute? State your name and the items you want to speak on. Hi. Uh, hi, uh, this is Charlie. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello? Okay, hi, this is Charlie Carno with Unite Here Local 11. Uh, I want to speak in general public comment and also on item three. Um, first, I just wanted to um, uh, just uh, second Liliana's comments and thank uh, Council Member Rahman for support of the um, of the Just Hollywood plan and recognizing that homes are what's important in this time and not hotels. I also want to thank uh, Council Member Cedillo uh, for doing the same in the Westlake area um, uh, and really uh, hearing the voices of working of working people. Um, in, uh, in regards to item three, I just wanted to extend. Um, local 11 strong support for the item. Uh, it's absurd that housing covenants uh, for affordable housing expire uh, at all, uh, and it's, it's good to see there's some progress there. Uh, but it's really important, especially during this pandemic, to make sure nobody is faced with a rent increase that will push them out of our home. I know for myself uh, and my household, um, uh, the lack of a rent increase has been helpful in keeping us housed um, when one of our uh, folks has lost their job, um, and uh, and that's even more critical. I mean, the RSO unit even more critical in affordable housing. So thank you very much. Thank you. Caller with the last four digits, two two four zero. Could you please press star six to unmute? State your name and the items you want to speak on. Yeah. Hello. My name is Sabrina Johnson, and I'd like to speak on item three, please. Go ahead. Hey, I am calling to express my support for this item. Um, but I want to say, I think we all know that the solution to the crisis that we currently face is public housing. Um, we are the second largest city in this country, and yet the size of our housing authority is is relatively small compared to others. We don't even crack the top ten. Um, and so we need to really work on it, uh, expanding that uh, that housing stock. Um, but in the meantime, because we're, we're decades behind on this, in the meantime, we do need to take every step that we can to preserve the affordability of our private housing stock. And I believe that this motion is a good step towards that. I would also encor encourage um, the council to look into things like tenants' right to counsel and other renter protections as well. Um, so thank you for considering um, number three today. Thank you. Caller with the last four digits, 0240, could you press star six to unmute? State your name and the items you want to speak on. Hi, uh, John Parks, and I'd like to speak on item number three. Go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, council members. John Parks with the Coalition for Economic Survival. Uh, CES fully supports this motion to freeze rents on at-risk affordable housing and to prevent the displacement of those tenants. Um, and we'd like to thank council members Cedillo and Raman for your leadership on this issue. Uh, CES, with the support of HUD and the city of LA, has been assisting tenants living in at-risk government-assisted housing for over 30 years, and we've been empowering renters to take action to preserve their affordable housing. However, if these units are lost, they will not be replaced, thus furthering our housing and homelessness crises. 
Um, and we cannot solely build our way out of the affordable housing shortage without also preserving existing units. Uh, saving truly affordable housing and preventing displacement preserves the core communities and diversity of our city. And we strongly urge adoption and implementation of this motion. Uh, thank you all. Thank you. Caller with the last four digits, 8919. Could you please press star six to mute, state your name and the items you want to speak on. Hi, this is uh, Wayne McNair. I'd like to speak on item three in general public comment. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to call in uh, with my support for item three. I'd like to uh, echo what some of the previous callers said. Um, I agree with the caller who was talking about public housing. I think any time we talk about housing and keeping people in their homes, we need to really think of uh, better solutions because while I agree with this motion, there's really only so much uh, the private housing stock can, can help this crisis. But that being said, I think this is a great step forward. I think this absolutely needs to happen. Um, so it has my my full support. And um, I think we need to act with urgency on it because, you know, we're, we're facing a, a huge crisis of homelessness in, in the city. And as we've seen from other actions of this council, we really aren't doing our best to uh, fix that, that problem. Um, so the least we can do is not exacerbate it further and, and get, you know, into a situation where even more people are on the street while we're still struggling to get the people on the street into housing. Um, so, yeah, I think I think definitely pass this motion and uh, act on it urgently. Thank you. Thank you. Caller with the last four digits, 0545. Could you please press star six to unmute? State your name and the items you want to speak on. Hi, this is um, this is Alex in Los Feliz. I'm just calling to register a quick um, mood of strong, strong support for item three. Uh, feels like an absolute no-brainer. It's climate. You're getting cut off, uh, caller. Hello. Caller with the last four digits, 0899. Could you please press star six to unmute? State your name and the items you want to speak on. Hi, uh, my name is Stacy Dawson Stearns, and I would like to speak on item three, general public comment. Go ahead. Hello. Okay, cool. Um, thank you. Yeah, I Go I ahead, of yes. This I, I support this motion and um, thank you, um, uh, Council Members Sadia and Raman, for for bringing this up. I just um, there's a lot of things though. This is this kind of is great, but it represents sort of a piecemeal approach where there's a bigger problem that just kind of keeps getting pushed aside. I know that that Council Member Bonin has brought up the LLC reveal motion, like we really need to kind of start addressing these LLCs that are operating most of the housing in Los Angeles. We need to sort of demystify this. And I also want to push for some sort of council action to really address the expiration of affordable housing units, because this just happens over and over again. So we're not fixing anything in LA, except kind of, and this might have to happen on a state level. Um, I'm not as smart as you are, um, Nithya, so I know you can figure it out, but I really do think that we have to look at what affordable housing really means, and when it expires in 50 or 55 years, we're just creating an ongoing problem that's always going to haunt us, and we're never going to have the sort of um, stable housing for families, generations of families to thrive, because displacement equals a lack, of, it, it decenters everything, and we lose a lot, so I just I'm I support it. Thank you. But let's go further. Um, but Cedillo, I'm sorry, I'm moving into general public comment here, but, but um, Gil Cedillo, it just has to, you, this looks good, but you have to start talking out of just one side of your mouth because most of your actions are actually very, very damaging to people with low incomes. 
and in your district especially, you are constantly giving, I mean, you met with um, Maury Goldman like 25 times between 2013, 2013 and 2020. That's more times when you're meeting with constituents. So when you're meeting with these representatives from urban strategies and people who work with massive developers to kind of twist the TSC rulings and all this kind of stuff to build these luxury. Thank you, caller. Caller with the last four digits, 0545. Could you please press star six to unmute, state your name and the items you want to speak on. Caller with the last four digits. Okay, go ahead. Hi, this is Alex in Los Feliz. It sounds like I got cut off last time. I want to make sure you can hear me. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Hey. Great. Uh, I just wanted to offer a quick um, statement of strong support uh, of item three in this climate feels like an absolute no-brainer and just register my strong, strong appreciation to council members uh, Raman and Cedillo for introducing it and championing it. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Caller with the last four digits, 8568. Could you please press star six to unmute, state your name and the items you want to speak on. Caller with the last four digits, 8568. Could you please press star six to unmute, state your name and the items you want to speak on. Caller with the last four digits, 08568. Could you please press star six to unmute, state your name and the items you want to speak on. Caller with a user one, um, could you please press star six to unmute? State your name and the items you want to speak on. Yeah, hi, I'd like to speak on. I'd like to speak on um, item number three in general public comment, please. Go ahead. Um, yeah, I'd like to support this. Um, I think obviously rent freeze is very, very important. Unfortunately, um, as others have mentioned, it's targeted. We should have been doing this months ago with all rent. Um, but you know, if this is the best we can do, then I hope, I hope we can support this and get it passed through committee into the full council, um, and general public comment. Um, I just like to lament that there's only three items on this agenda on a housing agenda for the Los Angeles city council. When we have tens of thousands of unhoused people, tens of thousands of people behind on rent, this should be the busiest committee. You guys should be pushing out all kinds of stuff all the time for public housing and and renter protections. Um, so I'd really like to see you pick up your urgency. Um, you know, and it's unfortunate we have people like John Lee who are voting against uh, wage increases for frontline grocery workers. I don't know what good he's going to do on this committee. I, he's all he ever does is suck up the landlord. So. You know, and and of course the corruption with him with Plum, it's it's disappointing he's on this committee at all. It's way too uh, attractive for him to you know possibly be in the position to be taking more bribes on housing. So um, I would really hope that he would step down from this committee. Thank you. I yield my time. Thank you. Caller with the last uh, with user two caller. Could you please press star six to unmute? State your name and the items you want to speak on. Caller designated user two. Could you please press star six to unmute? State your name and the items you want to speak on. Caller with the la with, with the designation user two. Could you please press star six to unmute? State your name and the items you want to speak on. Mr. Chair, that's all we have for public comment. Say no more. <laughs> Can we uh, then move into the agenda? Sufficient and effective agenda, ours. Would you like to start with item number one, Mr. Chair? Sure, I'd be happy to. Item number one is a Los Angeles Housing and Community Investment Department report. And we have the City Administrative Officer 2 report 
relative to authority to accept a $42.21 million dollar million dollars in transportation and infrastructure related grant awards for the 2019 round five from the strategic growth council's affordable housing and sustainable communities program okay can we have each to come up and give us an overview of what we have here claudia um, right here. Good afternoon, council members. I believe uh, the CAO was going to provide a brief uh, overview of the report, and then I'm happy to provide any d detailed information on the on the project in the round five acceptance transmittal. Yeah, yeah, no, we're good. Uh, anybody who's here from the CAO's office? Hi, good afternoon, council member Mary Lorena Faria from the CAO's office. Um, the item hey, is. So the item is um, the HSA requesting authority to accept um, sev seven grant awards totaling $42.2 million. Um, our office concurred with the recommendations of the department. The report just provided additional information regarding the grant program's reimbursement process. Um, and with your permission, I could read the recommendations of the CAO report into the record. Please do that. Okay. The CAO report dated February 22. 2021, um, the recommendations read as follows. That the council subject to the approval of the mayor, one, adopt recommendations 2 A and B of the Housing and Community Investment Department, HSA transmittal, dated January 21st, 2021, relative to the request for authority to accept grant awards totaling $42,217,282 from the California Department of Housing and Community Development State to implement round five of the Strategic Growth Council's Affordable Housing and Sustainable Communities ASIC program. Two, authorize the general manager of the HSID or designee to prepare controller instructions and make any necessary technical adjustments consistent with the mayor and council action on this matter, subject to the approval of the city administrative officer and request the controller to implement the instructions. And three, instruct the HZ to submit reimbursement requests to the state as soon as the standard agreements for A6 rounds three, four, and five projects are executed. Okay, thank you, and I'm available along with HZ colleagues to answer any questions. Colleagues? Any questions for the CAO? Questions for H. Sid, Mr. Kikorian. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just briefly, I wanted to get a sense of when we might be able to anticipate that the reimbursement requests will be made, so that we can relieve that staff pressure on the general fund. Will that happen during this fiscal year? Uh, good afternoon, uh, Council Member Kikorian. This is Claudia Monterosa for HSED. Uh, yes, we are currently preparing, uh, uh, getting to launch a uh, reimbursement request for uh, round three projects. We just completed the execution of those two awarded projects from the, the third round of funding. And so that'll be our first, uh, our first run at uh, preparing and submitting a draw request to the state. I do also want to state that we have been, we are working cohesively with the Departments of Bureau Engineering and the Department of Transportation to uh, establish a, a good system around the three departments that are going to be implementing um, all these projects over the next, I would say, 10 years or so. Uh, we do have 12 or, or 13 projects now on the queue that, that will take anywhere between uh, four to five years to implement. Okay. And then how long does it usually take uh, in your experience to get the reimbursements implemented? So we have been uh, working very diligently with the Housing and Community uh, Department at the state and they have promised us that they will be working with us uh, to expedite the reimbursement of, of those funds um, as soon as we submit. So we're, they, they are telling us anywhere between five to seven weeks. Um, oh, really? Oh, yes. that's, that's so lightning it's, speed it's, for the state. It's pretty quick uh, for them. We will see. 
but that is what we anticipate at this point. Obviously, the first draw that we submit is going to probably take a little bit longer because that will be the first time that the city does submit its reimbursement uh, request. Great. Thank you. That's good news. Sure, no problem. Algo más? Anybody else? No, this seems fairly straightforward. Thank you. That, does that mean you're moving uh, to adopt CAO's recommendations? Yes, I am. <laughs> thank you so much, Mr. Kikorian. Thank you for that. Uh, Madam Clerk, can we have a roll call? Calling the roll to adopt the CAO recommendations for item number one, Council Member Cedillo. Cedillo, aye. Council Member Rahman? Yes. And Council Member Harris Dawson is not present at the moment. Council Member Krikorian? Aye. And Council Member Lee is absent from the meeting. Three ayes. The CAO recommendations are approved. Item number two uh, is the Los Angeles Housing and Community Investment Department providing a verbal report on the status of the receipt of SB2 Permanent Local Housing Allocation Plan Program Grant Awards from the State of California Department of Housing and Community Investment. Okay, so again, this is Claudia Monterosa with HZLA, and I will be providing a brief uh, verbal report on the status of the permanent uh, funding source at the state of California, also, also known as SB2. I do have some initial good news. We finally did receive the uh, official award letter from the state um, housing department in early February, and the staff will be working on preparing the report back as outlined uh, in the recommendations from the adopted CAO report from July uh, of, of 2020. And um, as you may recall, this is a the state of California's permanent source of funding for affordable housing based on a recordation fee adopted by the state in 2017. And we are currently awaiting the first ever alloc first year allocation of, of this grant, uh, um, this um, <laughs> I'm going to say uh, it's, it, it's based on a formula, it's a formula-based grant, so we are not going to be getting, we don't, we don't have to compete for these funds. It's really based in model after the CDBG funding uh, formula. So the City of Los Angeles is set to receive um, 26, a little bit over $26 million for the first year allocation. I do want to say that the, the receipt of this has been delayed. Um, by the state, and we were expecting to receive the award uh, letter in December of last year, but it was delayed and we just now have that in our hands. So we will be now waiting to receive the standard agreement, which will then we will need to execute. Uh, and upon the completion of that, the city will receive a check in the full amount of the $26 million for the first year. As you may recall, last year we submitted a five-year allocation plan along with the first year allocation plan um, because it really follows the same approach of the consolidated plan uh, under CDBG rules. Um, so I can provide you with a very quick overview of the categories that we submitted for the for the allocation plan and um, it's as follows. We are allocating 44.4% or $11.6 million for the managed pipeline program, 21.9% or $5.7 million for the preservation uh, program at HZ, 19.9% uh, or 5%, 5.2% for the homeownership down payment assistance program for moderate income, so the MIPA program. We uh, also will be allocating 5% or $1.3 million for the rental assistance program under the eviction defense program that we're about to launch uh, in the next, hopefully very shortly. Um, and 3.8 or 1% uh, for a yet for the ADU accelerator program. This grant allows for 5% of the total amount for staffing related um, costs. So that will be approximately 
uh, million dollars. So we do expect to get a, a, a first allocation of $26.2 million shortly after we execute the standard agreement. And I'm happy to, uh, so what I will also uh, express is that the city council adopted a report that has specific council, uh, that has specific instructions for the city to come back in its written report back and we will be addressing those instructions in that in that report back and i'm happy to answer any questions that you may have thank you questions colleagues yeah um i wanted to ask whether the um i know that you had allocated a percentage of this money maybe in the application program for this for eviction protection or the eviction defense program. Um, this, I assume that this request for funding was made before the new SB 91 allocations were being made. And I wonder, given how much money is coming through that program, um, whether there was any assessment done of whether this new allocation was required for supplementing those funds or whether um, you know, whether the original request uh, needed to change in order to reflect the new uh, fiscal reality of uh, eviction defense funds at, at HCID. Sure. Uh, yes, this, this uh, allocation plan was prepared way before we knew um, the two and potentially the three eviction um, or rental assistance uh, relief funds were going to be um, allocated to the city. Um, and also at that time, we were trying to also identify additional resources for the eviction defense program. And as per the eligible um, activities under the grant, um, we, we saw an opportunity there to allocate this 5% for the eviction defense program for the rental assistance component of it. I mean, it is something that we can actually take a look um, and, and, and assess. Um, we we have a longer period of time to expand those funds as opposed to the rent and relief program that's coming or funding uh, as you know the second tranche of that federal funding needs to be expended by september of of this year so these funds have a longer shelf life to say that and we can actually um, uh, mold it to the needs of the eviction defense program program as it's outlined uh, uh, you know instead of having and it be a lottery system, perhaps, you know, we can, we, we would do a first come first serve basis and really couple it with um, the emergency um, component of the uh, legal uh, pre eviction legal uh, uh, assistance component of the other program or do longer term housing stability uh, that is outside and above and beyond that. However, we're happy to come back with uh, potential uh, adjustments as as permitted by the eligible uses and also uh, based on the needs of the program because the eviction defense program only has one year funding as well. Um, so we would, you know, that will be something that will be discussed at a later point, you know, finding uh, and identifying additional sources of funding for um, beyond, beyond this first year of funding for the eviction defense program. Okay, that's helpful. So it seems like you are probably just gonna. Uh, the the I'm I'm hearing that you're making a recommendation that we could wait and use this for needs that come up through the eviction defense program that are unable to be met through the through SB the through the SB ninety one. Yes, because we're looking at the eviction defense program as a hopefully longer term uh, program. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. Sure. Claudia, can you tell us a bit about the um, proposed allocation 5.7 uh, for the rental preservation expenditure? Um, tell us about uh, the program, its development by HCID, and, and what's when it's going to be brought forward for council approval. Sure. So um, the categories that I delineated are were proposed and submitted to the state and those have been formally approved by 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 the state so let me um, provide you with a quick overview of what we propose to do with the preservation uh, component so 
So uh, the, as, as you all well know, the preservation program has been severely underfunded to adequately address the current housing needs under, under the preservation uh, and basically the sheer number of at-risk units in the city. So this funding will be added to that categories uh, for, for basically bond um, allocations to preserve big projects. It's a traditional model to extend uh, basically expiring covenants. Uh, covenants. And, and those are needed sources. We haven't been able to do as much because we have had a zero uh, dollars allocated to that program activity. And this will start getting much needed funding to be able to have uh, the initial rollout of the intended um, program under the, uh, under the preservation. Uh, basically, once we identify uh, uh, developments that are at risk of having their um, units uh, expiring, um, we could, uh, you know, they could come through the managed pipeline and utilize this funding as gap um, assistance or gap funding. Also, the program or the fund, the revenue from other sources would not be precluded. Is that correct? Um, may you explain that question a little bit? So if we could get, for example, our state senator to maybe tap into surpluses that the state is now talking about, that we could get legislation that just went straight into, um, uh, into that, uh, I don't know what you want to call it. The allocation of funds. Yeah, the allocation, the financial deposits, right? The depository where we could just, uh, make that an account that could receive money, not just from, from this program, but also from settlements that the state may have where they money comes in or surpluses that the state may have, uh, depending on the nature of their budget. And we could, uh, through the leadership of our state legislators, have money put deposited into that. We know that up to 10,000 units are going to be are vulnerable at the moment, and we're going to need funding that exceeds that by, you know, a thousand times. Yeah. Frankly. Yeah. So this is an initial tiny little down payment into the, you know, for the preservation program. And this is intended to be a leveraging source for other funding sources as well. Sort of uh, the, the way the managed pipeline uh, also works. So, you know, the managed pipeline relies on home dollars and with the incoming, uh, uh, initial funding from the affordable housing linkage fee, and now with these SB two dollars, we will have we will be coupling these 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 funding sources together as gap assistance to help bolster the funding uh, for those activities, which are a priority of, of the city, right? For both rental, new construction, and for preservation of affordable housing. Great. We're starting our accounts. Yeah. Is that correct? In essence. Mr. Kikorian, we're good? Okay, well, thank you so much. I guess we receive and file your uh, verbal uh, report. Uh, I'm very excited uh, for a couple of reasons. One, it's almost impossible in Sacramento to get any money off a recording fee. Uh, it's impossible. I'm, and I know Tony Atkins, and she's very capable, smart, talented, skilled, and I don't doubt that... Uh, her position as the speaker pro tem was a big role in this. And so I'm excited about that. And I'm excited that there is a uh, rental preservation expenditure fund or account, because I think uh, at this moment with COVID dollars coming to California, this provides an opportunity for the state to direct resources exactly and specifically to that account for those potential 10,000 units that we could now secure going forward. So those are two very positive developments uh, from this uh, report. So thank you very much, yeah. Madam Clerk. Thank you, Claudia. No, sincerely. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. No need to do a roll call on this item. We can move on to number three. Great. Item number three is a motion by Council Member Cedillo and Raman relative to the implementation of an immediate rent freeze on residential units with expired or expiring affordability covenants 
and relocation options for impacted tenants while exploring options to preserve long-term affordable housing stock. Um, Member Rahman, you want to make a presentation on this? Please go ahead. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. As Mr. Kakorian knows, uh, there are issues for which are once uh, that are very important to me, very near and dear. And once I get attached to them, I can be a little. Some people will say I'm stubborn. I refuse to accept that, but I am very committed to the preservation of affordable housing in the city. Concerned that this is an area not focused on, and thank you for your leadership on this. This is an opportunity for us to, um, at the moment, constitutionally uh, protect these units and begin to explore options to preserve them in a the long-term manner that's constitution, constitutional and meaningful for tenants. And so um, I support this motion, obviously. Mr. Kokorian. Mr. Chairman, you're... Um your relentlessness produces great results, uh, and this is yet another example. I'm happy to move approval of the motion. Second by Member Rahman. Yep, and um, I, I did just want to add that I think one thing that's useful is that there appears to be, at least just as, um, you know, I new to this role, but there appears to be a lot more conversations between state and city officials in terms of some of the challenges with preserving affordability and uh, especially in, in the context of COVID um, and in the context of the pandemic, trying to keep renters in their homes, trying to make sure eviction protections are preserved. And there's been a lot of dialogue among housing justice organizations, um, including conversations between groups that are working in the Bay Area, groups that are working in Los Angeles. So I think this is a moment where I think we could also ask these kinds of questions while also asking what kind of state support we need in order to move these questions forward. So I'm eager to uh, to have this conversation in a, in a serious way. Yep. Clerk? Calling the roll for item number three. Councilmember Cedillo? Aye. Councilmember Rahman? Aye. Councilmember Harris Dawson is not present. Councilmember Krikorian? Aye. Councilmember Lee is also absent. That's three ayes. The motion is approved. Madam Clerk, thank you very much. Does this clear the substantive and effective agenda that we have today? Yes, Mr. Chair, the desk is clear. Right. Is there a motion to adjourn? Yes. So be the order. Uh, this meeting is adjourned. I thank everybody for your participation this afternoon. Uh, I thank the members. Other members have obviously... Uh,